Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. This time, maybe we should be renaming it. We're not. But to some degree, this could be both from the Star Wars Home Video Library and kind of from the Star Trek Home Video Library, because we're looking at an item here that goes with the pattern we saw last episode and we'll still see next episode of these things that are sort of documentary or news-style programs that are in my Star Wars Home Video Library, thanks to the generosity of Matt Fry when he donated a bunch of stuff into my collection, including these, and which I just haven't had a chance to show on here before. I needed time to actually go through and research them, and they're not exactly mainstream releases for us to look at, and mainstream releases tend to take precedence. But as recent, you know, new releases of Star Wars films are kind of dwindling, more than kind of, but they're dwindling quite a bit, it gives us a chance to explore some of these things. And this one is something that comes from the same company that was behind this that we've looked at before, the stars of Star Wars. Uh, and you may recall that this was kind of an odd one in that it basically was a whole bunch of like stock uh, interviews and stuff for press tours and things like that, along with some new narration kind of spliced together into this program that was a little bit odd um, just because of its very nature. It didn't really seem like it featured much in the way of new material. It was primarily just let's take this breadth and scope of stuff that's out there like with you know, electronic press kits and stuff like that, or press junket type stuff. And let's just, like, weave it together with a new narration to try to present something as a documentary. Um, and that seems to apparently be their stock in trade because they've done it again with the program we're going to look at this time. Interestingly, though, this one actually is something that was at one point part of a television series, but which really has no mention of the series really at all on the actual product itself. So apparently Passport Video was behind, or they're the distributors of, a show that at one point was airing on television called Hollywood Rivals. And as part of their inaugural season, which ran 2001 into 2002, they aired an episode that was produced in 2001, but released on television in early 2002, that instead of looking at Hollywood rivals that were individuals like Schwarzenegger and Stallone and stuff like that, which tended to be the way that they presented their program, they took a look at the two big sci-fi franchises of the day, Star Wars and Star Trek. And what you got was something they later released on home video independently, separate of the Hollywood rivals product line, which was this. Star Wars versus Star Trek, the rivalry continues. Uh, we'll talk more about what is actually in this here in a moment. Let's just take a look at the product first. This is a DVD release of it from 2004, same year as the uh, the thing we saw in the last episode here as well, 2004 being a prominent year for, I guess, putting stuff like this on DVD while they had the chance. So Star Wars versus Star Trek, the rivalry continues, nothing else on the front. The spine up here at the top has the Passport Entertainment logo, then DVD logo, then the title and subtitle and product number there. The back, which we will read. You got a shot there of a uh, man's Chinese theater for A New Hope. A shot there of a release of uh, Star Trek First Contact. Images of various actors from both franchises separate. And then some shots from it. Legalese and everything there with symbols and whatnot on the bottom. This is NTSC. This is region all. So any player, but you do need to be able to handle NTSC to do it. So here's what it says on the back. For years, Star Wars fans have squared off against Star Trek fans over which space fantasy is the better choice. As a result, both franchises have been embroiled in a continuing battle for merchandise sales, publicity, and box office receipts. The science fiction genre has never seen anything like it, and as these fictional universes continue to expand, the competition seems to be never-ending. Star Wars vs. Star Trek, The Rivalry Continues, compares the space opera worlds of George Lucas and Gene Roddenberry for a one-of-a-kind intergalactic documentary. It traces the origin and development of Star Trek, from conception to the spin-offs and film series. It also takes an in-depth look at Star Wars, from its sci-fi influences in the past to its continuing box office clout. Interviews with such stars as William Shatner, George Lucas, Leonard Nimoy, Anthony Daniels, Billy Dee Williams, Carrie Fisher, James Doohan, and many more help to explain the amazing phenomenon. Whether you're a Trekkie or a Jedi Knight, this is one show you won't want to miss. It says Star Wars premiere slash the Star Trek experience, collector's bonus, enjoy the comprehensive coverage of the 1997 re-release of Star Wars, and the opening of the Las Vegas attraction, the Star Trek experience, also included are the complete interviews with Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, Liam Neeson, Leonard Nimoy, and William Shatner. 
Label-wise, about as generic as you could get. They couldn't even be bothered to make the words actually on there. They just, it's like they copied and pasted chunks of the front cover to make this label there, uh, the logo. So Star Wars versus Star Trek, just as it appears on the front DVD cover. Passport video, the rivalry continues, DVD. Then down here, you got the product number, approximate runtime of 80 minutes with your legalese going around the edge here. Um, it is an interesting program. Again, it is very much like Stars of Star Wars. It is a bunch of stuff that exists as, I guess, available interview footage, available blooper footage in some cases, lots of television commercials and whatnot that are spliced together to create this narrative, basically. And then you have a narration over top of it that tries to bring it all together into a documentary or television program format here. Um, it doesn't feel as though, maybe I'm wrong, it doesn't feel as though any of the content of the actual stuff you're seeing on screen or the interviews, any of that is actually their work so much as they're pulling it all together because these are publicly available, uh, I guess, non-copyrighted or free use, whatever, fair use um, type sources for publicity to pull this thing together. And it almost feels like they were going to do one on Trek and going to do one on Star Wars, or maybe did ones on both, and decided let's take them together. It's Star Wars and Star Trek. It's the big sci-fi rivalry out there. Let's play up the rivalry. Let's even make it part of Hollywood Rivals. Let's call it the Rivalry Continues. Let's really play up the rivalry of Trek and Star Wars. Except when you watch it. Because when you watch it, there's almost none of that at all. Whatsoever. It's not about Star Wars versus Star Trek. It is effectively Star Wars and Star Trek to some degree, how they sort of played off of each other over time in positive ways. Really, the only rivalry mentioned is very early on when they're introducing it, and this is actually being put out again. Uh, it was A lot of it was apparently recorded around like the late 90s and whatnot, and some stuff recorded in the 80s, um, but it was actually being put out on TV after being produced in 01 in 2002. So Phantom Menace has just come out. At the time this is being put together and the footage is being pulled together, it doesn't appear that Phantom Menace has been out for very long, if at all, because they don't really show a whole lot with Phantom Menace in it here. Um, but they talk about how when some people had lined up early to see Phantom Menace, they were sometimes harassed by Star Trek fans coming to the line to harass them. That's it. That's like the only versus shit in the entire thing. Not exactly correct advertising for this, unless... You're remembering the fact that the show was called Hollywood Rivals, and it then had to have a versus as the part of the title that indicated what they were going to talk about. And yes, Hollywood Rivals, the, the opening of the show is on here. It is the program from Hollywood Rivals. It just doesn't say it anywhere on the packaging itself. There are some bonus features before I get into sort of the body of this thing. Uh, I did take notes on my phone here, in this case taking a snapshot uh, of the bonus feature screen. It does show the full press footage from the Star Trek experience uh, when it opened in Las Vegas and for the Star Wars re-release premiere in 1997. Although it, it's the same source that a lot of stuff came from for this, and I find it interesting that a lot of times it's like footage of, say, Mark Hamill doing an interview, but not with the person recording the footage. So the microphone, the audio is going to somebody else. So you can barely hear him when he's talking the way that it's set up within that crowd. Um, there is a Carrie Fisher interview uh, with a Spanish-speaking outlet. So it's interesting that she's responding some in, in English, but a lot of it is in Spanish. Um, then there's interviews with Harrison Ford, Liam Neeson, which I believe is the same one that you would see through here. Um, Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner as well. They're just, you know, here are the full stock interviews that we cut stuff out of in order to create our narrative for our thing here. But yeah, so I took some notes here, so let's dive into these. I mentioned the harassment issue being really the only rivalry thing they mention. Um, the video is of absolutely horrid quality. Like, really, really bad. Like, even when they're showing clips of the movies, it's bad quality. It's like somebody was capturing from a bad VHS recording of some of this stuff to make the original version of this. It's, it's bad. Like, bad quality television-based... I don't know how to describe it. It's just bad. It looks like if you've ever seen somebody like take a dub of something that is not copy protected, but they made a dub of a dub of a dub of a dub and slowly but surely it gets muddier and muddier as it goes along. It kind of looks like that. It's really not a pleasure to watch visually for sure. Um, 
The whole thing does have their watermark on it, since they're using from various sources. They're going to make sure that they have their watermark presently, or uh, prominently, excuse me, provided down in the corner. Um, let's see. Uh, there are a lot of shots that get reused over and over again to the point that it's ridiculous um, because they're trying to make their, their point. Um, a lot of times, it's like the kids doing like like projects for school and they need to talk about something but have no video of it that they can use legally, but they can find like a stock picture of it or like a publicity picture that's okay to use. So a lot of times we'll be talking about something and like, here's a picture of a person that we're talking about. It's going to slowly zoom in or slowly zoom out or it'll spin or it'll fade into stars. But it's just still images in a really poorly produced PowerPoint looking thing a lot of times. Um, even one time when the Enterprise is flying across the screen, they couldn't even use a shot from like a trailer or something of the Enterprise flying across the screen. It's a static shot of the Enterprise and they just like scooted it across the frame. Um, is bad. Um, uh, it was kind of cool to see one of the shots was in a store where they actually showed the uh, one last time. Giant Darth Vader face standee for the THX Remastered Editions in that store. I actually have one of those out in our garage that I haven't put together in years. Um, the through line is not about any type of clash between them. It's the impact of them and how they played off each other. Um, the notes that I have here for how it flows, um, it talks about Star Trek on television, then the release of A New Hope, kind of sparking renewed interest in sci-fi like Flash Gordon, Battlestar Galactica, and so forth, uh, then how that helped lead into the film version as opposed to a TV series as originally was intended uh, for what became Star Trek The Motion Picture, then Empire Strikes Back, Wrath of Khan, Return of the Jedi, Search for Spock, Voyage Home, Spaceballs, Final Frontier, Undiscovered Country. Uh, they talk about how the Trek films have been hit or miss, whereas the Star Wars films up to that point have been very, very well received. They talk a bit about how Trek has really made an impression on television, but that Star Wars just has never had an impact on television and may never because it just hasn't captured television audiences uh, or they've never really tried to do live action the way they have with Trek. Obviously, that is very dated now. Uh, they mention Trek animation. They do mention Ewoks and droids and whatnot as attempts to get Star Wars to television. Then go into Next Generation, brief mentions of Deep Space Nine and Voyager. That heads in to talk about the Star Wars Special Editions, which was one of the more recent things as of this point. Um, uh, let's see. They claim that Star Wars's return to the big screen couldn't match Next Generation's return, right? that the prequels were not nearly as successful and awesome as Generations, First Contact, and Insurrection, which were the only Next Generation films out uh, to this point. Uh, Nemesis was still a ways away. They claim that the Trek movies with the Next Generation cast are awesome and show no signs of ending anytime soon. Whereas, once this was aired in 2002, shortly thereafter we saw Attack of the Clones in theaters, but we also saw Star Trek Nemesis, which was the last of the live-action films until the Kelvin reboot. Um, so maybe not great with that claim. Uh, they do mention that two more episodes of the prequel trilogy are on the way, one later that year, and then, of course, Revenge of the Sith three years after that, uh, that they were in production at the time. And they suggest that Lucas's third trilogy, the sequel trilogy, will still be made if they are successful. So again, another reference to the fact that Lucas had at one point talked about there being nine films. After talking about one, then twelve, then nine, then six... And then, I never said anybody else couldn't make them. I just said I wouldn't and all that stuff we've talked about before. But it's all within the context of how Star Trek helped pave the way for sci-fi audiences, which then brought us into Star Wars, which helped pave the way for a return to the big screen for Trek, which helped pave the way for it to return to TV, and eventually Star Wars returning and the technology involved and, and how that's broadening the sphere and so on. And just this idea that it doesn't matter what you're a fan of, that they both have, have complemented each other in essence and are these indelible parts of modern pop culture. But not anything versus really about it. Not really. It'd be like if you did a, um, a Trump versus Biden, a Trump versus Clinton, and Obama versus McCain or whatever type of video in an election year. And instead of actually talking about the clash of the rivalry of that election, you instead like told the stories of their childhoods just back to back and how maybe they were affected by some of the same real-world things like the Vietnam War or something. I mean, it's an interesting thing. It might make a fun watch if the video quality wasn't shit. Um, it might make a fun watch, but it's not a rivals versus kind of thing. Not really. It's not even helping your audience really make a decision between two possibilities, in this case, Trek and Wars. So 
it's it's an okay watch. It was painfully difficult. It it's an okay listen. I'll put it down. It's, it's okay to listen to. Watching video quality wise, it's so bad. It's not really a pleasure to watch. Interesting to listen to, and certainly a product of its time and what we have come to expect from releases from Passport Video that seem to like to take sources readily available and try to make a buck off of them, or at least that certainly would be the way that it appears to me, looking at these two side by side. So you might want to put it in your Star Wars home video library. You might not. It is Star Wars related. It is a documentary, such as it is. So it is now in my Star Wars home video library. I would definitely be keeping it in my thanks to Matt Fry for passing this along. That said, how much you're actively going to want to search for this, we'll see. And just beware from a, a content uh, quality standpoint. I imagine it's probably been ripped and is on YouTube or something at this point if you wanted to see it, but it is out there at least on DVD. I bet it's probably on VHS as well, given the era that it was in. I just haven't run across a VHS copy myself, but Star Trek versus Star Wars, it's out there. The rivalry continues, just not even remotely, in the program itself. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you, and... May you also live long and prosper.